Welcome. I think juggling is cool. It looks like it takes a lot of practice. It's rather elegant, entertaining. But I don't really like to practice juggling. So when I juggle, I like to use just one ball. Pretty cool, huh? Just kidding. But treating a physics problem that includes vector quantities as if it's always in one dimension is like juggling with one ball. You just get the wrong answer. Fortunately, though, you can juggle one ball at a time when it comes to vector physics. That is, you can analyze each component separately and then put it back together at the end. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we're asked to find the initial velocity of a deuteron before it collides with a neutron to produce a tritium nucleus. So we're given the initial velocities of the neutron and the final velocity of the tritium nucleus after the collision. We can use conservation of momentum here because there are no external forces acting on the system. We'll need to do so in component form since velocity is a vector quantity. We're going to call the initial velocity of the deuteron v2 because we're going to call the deuteron mass 2. And we'll call the um, neutron v1 and m1. We'll call the final velocity of the tritium nucleus Vf and this collision is completely inelastic which is important for our analysis. As we develop this problem we need to choose a coordinate system because we're dealing in more than one dimension and our velocities are given to us in unit vector form. So let's choose the i direction to be positive to the right and the j direction to be positive up. We start with the neutron, we'll call that mass 1, it has a, a mass of one atomic unit. We're told that its initial velocity is 27 in the i direction and 16 in the j direction with units of megameters per second. So it has a larger i component than j component, which we're just going to sketch here. We have the second mass, which is the deuteron. The deuteron has a mass of two atomic units. We do not know its initial velocity. That's what we're trying to find. So we can't really sketch it accurately, so I'm just going to draw an arrow, which is a guess, and we can compare that with our final answer at the end. In a completely inelastic collision, the masses combine, and so we have a mass here that is equal to the sum of mass 1 and mass 2. So that's going to be three atomic units. And we're told that the final velocity after this completely inelastic collision is 11 in the i direction, and 19 in the j direction and the units again are megameters per second. So now we have a larger j component than i component which we'll sketch this way. Let's make a plan for how we will solve this problem. Because we're going to consider each component individually, I'm going to have a series of steps that we'll need to do for each component. Rather than write it out twice, I'm just going to write it this way. So for each component, we're going to equate the initial and final momenta. And then we can solve for the initial component 
of, uh, the, of the velocity of the Deuteron. So after doing this for each component direction, then we will have individual components, but we'll have to express our answer then back in vector form. So now we're ready to evaluate. Let's do the I direction first. So the big concept here, before we write the I direction, the big concept here is that momentum is conserved. So the momentum of particle 1 and the momentum of particle 2 has to be equal to the momentum after the totally inelastic collision. So for the I direction, we can write then that mass 1 times the component of mass 1 that's in the I direction plus mass 2 times the component of mass 2 in the I direction equals the final mass, which was the sum, times the component of the final velocity in the I direction. And we can go ahead and substitute now. One atomic unit times 27 in the I direction, megameters per second, plus two atomic units times, we don't know what that is yet, equals three atomic units times the component of the final velocity which we had as 11 megameters per second. So just as a reminder, it's this component of the initial velocity that we're looking for. I'll leave that algebra to you, but you can find that that component of the deuteron in the I direction comes out to be 3 megameters per second. So now we have one component of the initial velocity. We're going to repeat the process in the J direction. So we have the same masses, we have mass 1, but this time we have the component of velocity in the j direction. And we have plus mass 2 times the component of velocity 2 in the j direction equals the sum of the masses times the component of the final velocity in the j direction. And again, uh, well now we can substitute, so we have still one atomic unit times 16 megameters per second plus two atomic units times the component that we're solving for, which is the component of V2 in the J direction, equals three atomic units times uh, 19 megameters per second. And again, it is this component that we're solving for, and I'll leave that algebra to you once again, and we find that the velocity of the deuteron in the j direction is equal to 20.5 megameters per second. Now that we have each component of the deuteron's velocity, we need to express that in vector form. And so we have the velocity of the deuteron is equal to 3 megameters per second in the i direction and 20.5 in the j direction. We can write our units just once. How can we determine whether this answer makes sense? Well, first of all, we want to check our units, which is not too difficult in this case. In, when it came time to substitute, we included our units. We see that the atomic mass units cancel out in each term, and we're left with units of megameters per second, which checks out. What about the magnitude? That's a little bit more difficult to think about because it is not uh, velocity that is conserved, it's momentum, which is the product of mass and velocity. And so the heavier particle is going to have more influence on the final outcome, and that can help us think about our magnitude. So let's look at this. Initially, the neutron has an, an I component of 27, and we end up with an I component of only 11 megameters per second. We know we're adding quite a bit of mass. We're adding twice the mass with the deuteron, 
And since the final velocity is lower, we expect the velocity of the deuteron to be lower than both the final velocity and the initial velocity of the neutron as well. And so we have that in D. So to put this in words, we expect that the I component of V2 is going to be less than the I component of V1 and of the final velocity. What about the J component? Well, our, the J component of our final velocity is 19 megameters per second. The neutron had an initial velocity of 16 megameters per second. We're adding twice the mass with the deuteron, so if we're ending up with a substantially higher velocity of the total mass at the end, that deuteron must have had an even greater velocity than uh, both the neutron and the tritium nucleus, and that is indeed what we get. And so we also expect the velocity in the j direction of the deuteron to be bigger than the velocity of the neutron in the j direction and of the final velocity in the j direction. And so those do check out and so we have confidence then that the answer we've come up with is probably correct.